NASA expects to launch the James Webb Space Telescope, the largest and most expensive instrument ever flown. When the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, finally launched, it marked not just a technological milestone for NASA, but a new era in humanity's capacity to examine the distant universe. Suspended in the serene isolation of the second Lagrange point, a million miles from Earth, Webb's instruments opened a new observational frontier, capable of resolving structures across vast cosmic distances in a way no other telescope before it could. And in one particularly momentous instance, that capability was directed at an object that had confounded astronomers since its surprise appearance in 2017, an enigmatic body now known as Oumuamua. Discovered by astronomers using the PanSTARRS-1 telescope in Hawaii, the object was immediately recognized as an anomaly. Unlike the typical comets or asteroids that frequent the inner solar system, this one exhibited an unbound trajectory, clear evidence that it had come from beyond the solar system. It was, in fact, the first confirmed interstellar object to pass through our cosmic neighborhood, an unprecedented event that sparked intense speculation among scientists and the public alike. For years, debates swirled around its composition, behavior, and most controversially, its possible artificial nature. But with limited observational tools, those debates remained largely theoretical until Webb turned its gaze upon the mysterious traveler. Though media coverage would later sensationalize the moment Webb imaged Oumuamua, the reality was subtler but no less profound. The data collected was not simply a photograph, but a treasure trove of information embedded in infrared and near-infrared wavelengths. This imaging allowed astronomers to peel back the cosmic veil and examine the interstellar visitor in unprecedented detail. What the telescope revealed differed sharply from prior artistic renderings and theoretical assumptions. Early depictions often portrayed Oumuamua as a spinning cigar-shaped rock, tumbling erratically as it passed through the inner solar system. But Webb's high-resolution imaging refuted this. Instead, the object presented a strikingly prismatic geometry with sharply angled surfaces and a structure more akin to crystalline formations than to any known natural celestial body. Its form did not resemble the chaotic irregularities of a typical asteroid, nor the smooth symmetry of a comet's icy nucleus. It was faceted, like the fractured hull of a mineral, or perhaps even an engineered artifact. Adding to the mystery, Webb's sensors revealed an unusual surface composition. Certain regions reflected infrared light in ways suggestive of metallic or icy compounds, while others absorbed light heavily hinting at carbon-rich material. There were areas that displayed a peculiar iridescence, reminiscent of oil films on water, an optical effect rarely seen in space, and indicative of thin-layer interference. These observations defied the binary classification of comet or asteroid, and instead suggested something entirely new. Of particular interest to researchers was the spectral data embedded within the infrared imaging this enabled the chemical analysis of the object's surface, revealing an extraordinary mix of compounds not previously seen coexisting in nature. Traces of solid hydrogen were detected, an indicator that parts of the body had formed in temperatures far colder than typically found within known planetary systems. Other signatures pointed to exotic ices laced with oxygen and nitrogen-bearing molecules hinting at origins in environments as extreme as the icy mantles of protoplanetary disks or near-brown dwarfs. Motion data provided further surprises. Earlier estimates had suggested that the object was tumbling chaotically. However, precise modeling based on Webb's observations indicated a steady, axial rotation, with a full rotation occurring roughly every 8.3 hours. This consistent spin implied a cohesion far beyond what would be expected from a loose agglomeration of rock and ice. It hinted at a monolithic structure, perhaps solid or possibly held together by strong chemical or even metallic bonds. Another puzzle emerged in the object's thermal behavior. 
Thermal Inertia Modeling, How Quickly It Heats and Cools, revealed that Oumuamua did not behave like any known natural body of its size. Rather than heating up and releasing that heat rapidly, the object retained thermal energy for far longer than expected. This suggested an internal structure capable of insulation, such as a porous core or hollow spaces. Both possibilities presented difficulties. A porous body would likely disintegrate during interstellar travel, its structure too fragile to withstand collisions with micrometeoroids or prolonged exposure to cosmic radiation. A hollow core, on the other hand, raised speculative but not implausible questions about artificiality. Even as scientists remained cautious not to leap to conclusions, the sheer uniqueness of the data pointed toward an entirely new category of interstellar phenomena. Here was an object that bore no outgassing jets, no discernible tail, and no observable mechanisms of propulsion. Yet its path through the solar system and its rotational stability betrayed a highly specific set of physical properties. Traditional classifications, asteroid, comet, and minor planet, failed to capture its essence. Oumuamua had become, by virtue of observation, something else altogether. Its passage through the solar system was fleeting, but the implications lingered. The very fact that it existed, and that it had been detected, forced astronomers to re-evaluate long-standing models of planetary formation. No longer could it be assumed that solar systems were isolated cocoons. This object, likely formed billions of years ago in a distant stellar nursery, had been ejected and had traversed the interstellar void, undisturbed, until its brief encounter with Earth's star. This one moment, this one image, served as a profound reminder of the five Milky Way's dynamism. Our galaxy, it now appeared, was not a series of walled gardens, but an interconnected expanse, where material exchanged hands through gravitational kicks and chaotic scattering events. Oumuamua was the proof. A traveling time capsule carrying information about chemical environments, gravitational histories, and perhaps even the earliest stages of planet formation from its parent system. For astrobiologists, the web data opened a window to even more provocative questions. Could interstellar objects like this be vectors for complex molecules, or even the building blocks of life? The mix of organic compounds on Oumuamua's surface, though not necessarily biological, suggested the possibility. If an object like this were to collide with a young, hospitable world such as early Earth, might it seed that world with prebiotic chemicals? The theory of panspermia, once relegated to speculative fiction, gained newfound relevance in light of such findings. And beyond the hard science, there was cultural resonance. The image of Oumuamua became iconic, shared across classrooms, publications, and artistic interpretations. It represented a convergence of science and philosophy, offering a rare moment when humanity could look into the cosmic mirror and glimpse not just another world, but the shared history of matter itself. Artists, writers, and educators found inspiration in its silent passage. The object became more than a scientific curiosity. It became a symbol of interconnection across time and space. But in the end, perhaps the most profound impact of the web image was what it did not reveal. There were no propulsion trails, no unmistakable signatures of artificial design, no alien hieroglyphs etched on its sides. And yet, its geometry, resilience, and motion defied easy classification. This ambiguity, natural or not, would drive scientific inquiry for years. The release of Webb's image of Oumuamua did more than confirm long-standing hypotheses. It unraveled them. As scientists around the globe poured over the data, the clarity of the image yielded not simplification, but a cascade of deeper complexity. What was once assumed to be a simple, elongated fragment became a canvas of geological, chemical, and physical anomalies, each resisting easy categorization. The sharp angles observed on several of its facets, combined with geometric discontinuities and ridges aligned in parallel, told a silent story, one shaped not merely by collision or erosion, but by processes hitherto unobserved on such a small scale. Even the light that interacted with its surfaces did so in perplexing ways. Webb's infrared sensors detected patterns of reflection and refraction that were not random. Instead, these light behaviors appeared anisotropic, behaving differently based on the direction of incident light 
and the object's rotational phase. This sort of behavior suggested embedded crystalline structures or coatings with directional properties. Phenomena previously associated with certain minerals formed under immense pressure or in carefully controlled environments. But for such features to appear on an object adrift in interstellar space was without precedent. Laboratory attempts to replicate the reflectance and refractive patterns under cryogenic and vacuum conditions failed to recreate the spectral bandwidths Webb had recorded. One especially curious thermal anomaly was noted as the object receded from the sun. Unlike standard asteroids or comets, where heat absorption and dissipation follow predictable patterns based on mass, albedo, and spin, Oumuamua's thermal decay profile was asymmetrical. One end of the object retained heat significantly longer than the other. A prevailing theory emerged, suggesting that beneath the mineral crust, one region of the object housed layered deposits of volatile compounds, perhaps ammonia or nitrogen ices, encased within silicate shells. This formation may have occurred in the outer regions of a stellar system, where such ices could accumulate and solidify under minimal thermal influence. The implication here was enormous. If such compositional layering was confirmed, it would mean that even small interstellar objects could undergo a degree of geochemical differentiation usually reserved for larger bodies with sustained internal heating. In effect, a muamua might be a cross-section of a long-dead planet or moon, sheared off and ejected during some cataclysmic planetary event. This possibility galvanized researchers across disciplines. Astrochemists and geophysicists began building new databases of exotic minerals that might exist under extreme interstellar conditions. Planetary scientists re-evaluated existing models of accretion and ejection, introducing new parameters for how fragments of differentiated bodies could escape their home systems while retaining internal complexity. But the surprises didn't end with composition and heat. Webb's high-resolution data enabled an improved calculation of the object's mass-to-surface area ratio, which proved far lower than expected. This, combined with the observed trajectory deviations during its exit from the solar system, suggested a puzzling feature. Oumuamua was unusually responsive to solar radiation pressure. For a dense rock or ice fragment, this shouldn't have mattered. But in this case, the responsiveness implied that the object might be surprisingly thin, perhaps sheet-like, or constructed with a hollow interior, increasing its surface area without a corresponding mass increase. Such properties reignited earlier controversial discussions about the possibility of artificial origin. Some scientists proposed that the object might be similar in structure to a solar sail, a large, thin, reflective surface capable of being propelled by sunlight. This idea, while not widely embraced in official scientific circles, was no longer as easily dismissed as before. The physical properties Webb uncovered, lightness, symmetry, and responsiveness, did not contradict the hypothesis. Material scientists became particularly intrigued if the object's structural integrity was maintained despite being extremely thin, it could serve as a natural analog for interstellar sail dynamics, perhaps demonstrating how radiation alone could guide or stabilize a structure over long distances. The implications for future spacecraft design were immediate. Researchers began modeling passive propulsion systems inspired by Oumuamua's behavior considering whether nature might already be implementing the mechanisms human engineers were only beginning to conceptualize. Beyond the structural and material revelations, Webb's data also provided a startlingly clear map of the object's surface topography. Using minute shadows and contouring, planetary scientists treated the object like a microcosm of a planetary surface. Depressions, grooves, and ridge formations suggested more than random wear. They hinted at a history of high energy encounters and environmental exposure. One face of the object, in particular, appeared to have undergone prolonged bombardment by high velocity particles, possibly the stellar wind from an especially active star. These surface scars could, in theory, be mapped backward, offering a probabilistic route of the object's journey. If the timing and orientation of impacts could be cross-referenced 
with known star systems and their activity cycles. It might be possible to narrow down a region of origin. That endeavor, though still in its early stages, represented a turning point. No longer was the object a transient visitor with unknowable roots. It became a traceable relic, a shard whose trajectory might yet be deciphered through a blend of chemistry, topology, and astrophysics. In studying the object's surface even further, scientists discovered spectral evidence suggesting the presence of a fine regolith, an electrostatically bound layer of dust grains clinging to its exterior. But unlike lunar or Martian dust, this material appeared to have a unique spectral signature skewed toward carbon-rich compounds, possibly altered by billions of years of cosmic ray exposure. If confirmed, this would be a tangible record of how matter transforms during eons-long journeys through interstellar space. The most tantalizing clue, however, came from an isolated spectral spike buried in the near-infrared data. This absorption line did not match any known mineral, ice, or organic compound cataloged in terrestrial laboratories. Spectroscopists were left puzzled. Some suggested it could indicate a previously unknown complex molecule or an exotic vibrational mode of a unique crystalline structure. The anomaly appeared only once and within a very narrow bandwidth, but it has remained a persistent enigma, one that refuses to be explained and which may, if validated, represent the discovery of a new material class entirely. Parallel to these physical and chemical investigations, theorists turned their attention to environmental implications. What would happen if an object like Oumuamua were to impact a planetary surface? Traditional asteroid impact models are well understood, but the introduction of interstellar chemistry into a biosphere could trigger effects not yet explored. An interstellar object bearing unfamiliar isotopes, high energy fragments, or volatile compounds could catalyze atmospheric reactions or influence biological development in unexpected ways. These questions intersected with a broader theoretical pursuit. How common are such visitors? Webb's success in imaging Oumuamua in such detail prompted scientists to reconsider the frequency of interstellar objects entering our solar system. Using the object as a case study, astrophysicists began constructing probabilistic models that estimate how often such bodies might pass through planetary systems. The results were surprising. Far from being a once-in-a-lifetime anomaly, Oumuamua may represent just one of many interstellar fragments drifting undetected through space. This revelation spurred proposals for next-generation detection arrays. Not just telescopes, but wide-field, high-sensitivity sky monitoring systems capable of identifying fast-moving, high-velocity anomalies across the solar system. If you found this journey through science and mystery as fascinating as we did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. There's so much more waiting in the stars, and we'll be here to explore it with you.